On International Workers Day, thousands of Palestinians took to the streets to march in solidarity. And if there's any one group that needs to be in the streets fighting for their rights, it's Palestinians. They're one of the most brutally exploited labor forces in the world. So what if you're a Palestinian living in the occupied West Bank and you need to work? Well, first of all, you'd be very hard pressed to even find a job with 19% unemployment. And many of the jobs that exist pay starvation wages. This circumstance was created by Israel's occupation and stranglehold of the West Bank, where seizure of valuable land and resources, as well as numerous barriers and obstacles, make a viable economy in the West Bank impossible. So many Palestinians are forced to find work inside of Israel and even Israeli settlements that is extremely exploitative. So not only do Palestinians have their land and freedom stolen by Israel, but they are then forced to work for their oppressors, like slaves, in absolutely horrid conditions. For Palestinians that want to work in Israel, they must get a permit which is very costly and restrictive. Most are employed in construction and depend on labor brokers who take a significant cut of their pay, reaching up to 40%. And we haven't even mentioned the incredibly arduous journey just to even make it to your job. The 52,000 Palestinians that have permits to work in Israel are forced to endure long lines and humiliation at checkpoints, where they have to line up as early as 3 a.m. when crossing can take up to three hours. <laughs> Some 30,000 Palestinians decide to take deadly risks to avoid this unbelievable route. He's one of many Palestinians who go to Israel from the occupied West Bank every day without a work permit. Mohammed's studying nursing at the University of Ramallah. But to pay for his education and support his family, he needs a job that pays more than he can make in the occupied West Bank. Wages are better on the Israeli side. There I can earn $69 a day, whereas in the West Bank I can't get more than $24 a day. When there's work, Mohammed pays a smuggler $28 to drop him off at an opening in the border wall and crosses over with the help of spotters on the Israeli side. If caught, he faces deportation or prison time. But he also risks being shot by Israeli soldiers. If we make it across, there are cars waiting for us. It normally costs $3 to get to the workshop, but since we are there illegally, they charge us more. In total, it costs me $36 to get to work. On the way home, it's another $28 to get smuggled back to the Green Line. Approximately 26,000 Palestinians work in illegal Israeli settlements inside the West Bank where they're forced to build homes for their colonizers on freshly stolen land. Wael Salah is one of them. He lives in Bethlehem and has six children. He's not proud of building settlements on occupied Palestinian land, but he says he has no choice. If the Palestinian Authority would give us other work opportunities, no one would carry their tools and come to work here. People work here because they need to make a living, and for many of us, there is no alternative. Israeli labor law should apply here, but again, it's rarely implemented. There's also Israeli farm settlements in the Jordan Valley. The pay is below the minimum wage, and again, the holiday, sickness, and other benefits workers are entitled to under Israeli law are denied.
אחד התחומים שבהם הפועלים הפלסטינים מרוויחים סכומים זעומים, מגוחכים ממש, היא החקלאות בבקעה. כשאין אלטרנטיבה עובדים עבודה קשה בשיא החום, גם בעבור הסכום הכמעט לא יאומן של שמונה שקלים לשעה. הנחשפת מציאות עגומה של עובדים המתארים עצמם כעבדים. מג'יב של תשעים שבעה שעות ונוס. אה, שבע שעות ונוס. תחת אלכון ישראל, פיש. בעדין פיש, לא תאמין ולא פי אי אישה. يعني لا سمح الله تتدربة إشي حتى فيش بلانس يحملك من أن أنت بتروح بتعالج حالك وبس يتسمير أبقاش من بفيتا لأخر يوم أفضى مفارخ كم شاني ما تفلت؟ إيف وشا تفلت؟ ستان سري خد سريكا كم شو مين لك؟ ليوم شمانين؟ ما شيلي أنا هنا تلالة واتو خمس سري إيش خمس شكل لبلا بايت شيلي אז שישים שקל. כן, יש שישים שקל זה. מה אני אעשה? אני לא אבל לא. Israel has intentionally set up this slave-like relationship to use Palestinian labor rather than bringing in migrants from other nations. Palestinians are skilled in the highly desired construction field, many speak Hebrew, and at the end of the workday they leave Israeli territories back to the West Bank. And there they reinsert the money back into Israeli hands by purchasing the Israeli goods which dominate the West Bank market. Whereas migrants from Africa or Asia would be sending that money back home to their families. Now, if you thought that was bad, the situation in Gaza, which is isolated, under siege, and blockaded by Israel, is even more dire. While Palestinians in the West Bank can apply for work permits in Israel, or the settlements, or even sneak across the Green Line, workers in Gaza are prohibited. Arif Jendia, who works on a new building at Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza City, makes only $13 a day. And he's one of the lucky ones. Unemployment in Gaza was 52% in 2018, amongst the highest in the world. Just to put that in perspective, the highest unemployment rate in America is in Alaska, which is only 6%. With these incredible economic conditions and only 5% of Gaza's water supply being drinkable, the United Nations estimates that Gaza will be uninhabitable by 2020. Israel has used Palestinians throughout its history to build this state. The occupation sustains its growth and pours wealth into the hands of a few elite capitalists. Some Palestinian capitalists in the West Bank also enrich themselves off this misery. There's been an avoidance of class conflict in the West Bank and a real challenge to the corruption of the capitalist circle surrounding the Palestinian Authority, likely due to the desperate need for national unity to fight the oppression of Israel and win liberation. Thank you for watching. Please share this video and stay connected with If Americans New for all the latest news and analysis on Palestine.